after a lot of rain we now have sunshine again and forecast says there will be a few days where there is rain but the forecast for the next two weeks basically says sunshine so now is an opportunity to walk around and have a look at what other things have happened or how things look like here in the compound we do have a lot of grass that is a lot taller than elsewhere but of course nobody eats here because the doggies like this one they are not very interested in that they are interested in me right now <laughs> which is nice but not when you are filming oops <laughs> you see so check it out aus nein check it aus so and we plan to get the horses and sheep in here so that they take advantage of that the other thing that i can show you as long as checker lets me yeah checker it is good is the guys have harvested the vetiver here on that slope and yeah, well this is the pressure now from the pump this happens this is uh, from the outflow of the water reservoir the powerful pump that we have there the pressure when the sun is out like it is today is very very high so the guys have harvested a bunch of vetiver and there are a few things still missing but that will come and you can see how this slope looks like I should probably go to the other side and film it from there. Allow me to introduce you to our shop. It is located at our website kaimito.eu. One of the products is the world famous Iberian ham. After preparation in the butcher shop, it is kept in a huge amount of salt for a while and then hung from the ceiling in climate controlled ripening chambers for three to five years depending on the size of the hem. People either buy a whole leg, which is between 6 and 10 kilos, or hand-cut slices that are vacuum sealed in 100 gram pouches. As you can see in many of our videos, our pigs fatten themselves on acorns running around the land. The acorns give the hem a very nutty flavor, and after you took a bite, that flavor stays in the mouth for a while just like with a good wine in here we also have these uh, swales filled with water and we also placed a lot of the vetiver that got cut as mulch here onto the berms where the trees are i told the guys that this needs to be thicker instead of spreading it out they should focus on one tree and really pack it in and then use the next one. So that is really built soil and is not oxidizing or something like that. And when this has degraded a little bit more, you can bring the horses and sheep in here again so that they take care of the grasses. If we do this right now, we run the risk that the work will be destroyed again because they will eat what is supposed to be mulch well, you see here it is packed a lot thicker and the intention is to do this all the time that is why we have this wet here so that we can build soil in that fashion of course it only works in a case like this one here yeah a wannabe food forest an orchard or however you want to call it it does not work for paddocks. In theory, of course, yes, but it's not practical, so to say. And there's also something else. We have a lot of quinch, membrillo in Spanish, that we were not able to use because it was too many. And we don't have a stand at um, a farmer's market or something like that where we could sell 
something that we produce. So they fall from the tree and then will decompose there. It's not a big problem because this is um, the reproductive part for this tree. But of course it would be nice to be able to can generate some revenue by the things um, that are being produced. But later. And probably it's not something that we will ship from here to Germany because they have kinched their oats also. And the cats are still here in that cage. That is for their protection and to get them used to being here because that's the place where they get food. In a little while we will let them out and let them roam. And it's better to have a big cat instead of a small one when it's about getting into the compound where the dogs are. Because the smaller ones the dogs will kill and the bigger ones can definitely run away in time. I hope against the sun this is still visible how this looks like. There are mushrooms which is also a very positive thing. They are showing up now in all places. So this is working out well. In here we used to have a lot more weighty there but not everything made it. So let me quickly go to the other side and turn around. It will be easier to see in the sun instead of against the sun. So here you have it. Um, there are some trees missing that we will plant at some point because it is way too open. And that way we are here we can also cut for mulch. That is why we have it to have a nearby source. So you chop it down and place it right here on that very same berm. And if I had a magic stick, yeah, a magic wand, then of course we would have vetiver all on these berms, so on the side of them. But at some point I hope that we can have this. So the idea is to grow the mulch. And then you take a machete to just cut it and you place it works on this side. But we decided to bring in the vetiver from over there first because there we are looking for a different effect of the vetiver which is to um, hold the soil in place so that this platform will not slip away. So here we also did the same thing. We planted some rows and you see what is left from the chili. We were not able to harvest everything. So this is basically a loss. We will harvest it and uh, place it on the ground. And the plan is also to put more vetiver between those plants. Um, there is some of this chili available in our shop. And it will go bad if nobody picks it up. So if somebody is interested to spice up the life. Um, there are some 100 and 300 gram bags. This is not dried, what we have in the shop, so it will go bad if not picked up. And then it will contribute to the mulch the same way like this here. It's plant material, it will decompose. And now that I'm here, I can also give you an update on that grey water pond. So with the rain it is now filled. And the vetiver is also looking good. Of course now it has the autumn colours when it's cold. This is how that pond looks like. Here in the foreground you can see a few that apparently dried out and did not make it when there was not enough water. But the others will take their place. While it was heavily raining, something strange happened. 
a portion of that wall fell down and we had been using that wall that is very old to keep an electrical cable there that powers uh, the cortejo so that we have come some light in there and thankfully nothing happened to the cable but it is very interesting and a bit strange that this came down because of the rain because now we will do nothing here because it's not something that is important eventually these old structures will disappear maybe the cortijo will stay but other things around they will go there are some ideas but that is for a lot later but we can see rain can also make such a wall come down I don't know how it happened, but it collapsed.